OK, so this is a lesson on conditional probability. It's going to come in two or three parts. And at the start, I'm just going to motivate it. Um, and then in this video, we will also look at conditional probability uh, on a sample space diagram and conditional probability uh, when we look on a two way table. OK, so what we can see on the screen um, is a Venn diagram. Uh, three students A, B and C and say I kept track across a hundred lessons of which student was late to the exam, no, late to the lesson. So we can see that for example four times, uh, so if I highlight that, four times student A was late but actually students B and C were both on time. Uh, if I highlight this, this was the one time that students A and B were late, but student C was on time. And we can see 66 times all three students were on time. So if I start to work out some probabilities of these, uh, and yeah, I haven't said what conditional probability is yet, but uh, if I start to work out some probabilities, uh, probability of A being late, that's the four here, one, one, and four, and I'm not going to simplify these just yet. Probability of A intersect B, so both A and B being late, that is 2 out of 100. The probability of just B being late, we've got 5 here, so we've got 20. Probability of just C being late, you can see is 25. And of course, you would be expected to simplify these. A and C, 5 out of 100. B and C is also 5 out of 100. Right, so now I might want to say I'm suspicious of some of, of these students to see whether we feel um, are they being late because of each other or not. So if they were independent, so we know that uh, if independent, we've come across this before, the probability of A times the probability of B should be equal to the probability of A intersect B, if independent. So let's see, have we got this here? So probability of A multiplied by the probability of B, does that equal the probability of the intersection? So I'm going to get up my calculator and I am going to go into the main screen and probability of A is 10 over 100. Uh, obviously that's 0 0.1. Uh, probability of B is 20 over 100. And we get 1 out of 50. So this is 1 out of 50, which is 2 out of 100, which is exactly equal to the probability of A intersect B. Now, in real life, you don't get kind of, you, you have kind of like, it can, might be very close, but uh, this one I've designed and it is exactly the probability of A intersect B. So I, what that can tell us is that it appears that A and B are independent. So one being late doesn't affect the other. So now let's have a look for probability of A times the probability of C. Oh, I just didn't turn the calculator off. I just wrote that underneath um, independent. Right, now let's bring the calculator back and instead let's do the probability of A times the probability of C. So that is 25. And we get 1 over 40. We get 1 over 40. So this is 1 over 40 here. So let's have a look. The probability of A intersect C was 5 out of 100. Well, this, we don't, don't normally write fractions like this, but I could actually say that this is 2.5 out of 100. 
So this is definitely less than the probability of A intersect C. Or in other words, it feels like they have both been late more often than you would expect if they were independent. So this is dependent. But we, have, we are not satisfying this formula up here. We are not satisfying this formula. In fact, I might be suspicious and say they're, often, they're more often late than you would expect them if they were independent. So you might say that maybe they're getting the same bus or they're friends. Probability of B times probability of C. And if I bring back the calculator, then I can see that the probability of B times the probability of C gives me 1 out of 20. 1 out of 20, which is equal to 5 out of 100, which is equal to probability of B intersect C, which is independent. So we now know that if this formula here does not hold, we have a different situation. Well, we might want to ask the question, what is the probability of A being late if C is late? Or what is the probability of this given that something else happens? And this is where conditional probability comes in. So the key thing that we're going to be working out is using this notation. The probability of B given A or the other way around. So this really does read exactly as I wrote it. The probability B happens given A happens. Now we can kind of link this up a little bit to some of the other notation that we have used. So for example, I could say that the probability of B given A is just going to equal the probability of B if they're independent, because A is not having any effect on B, so it doesn't change the probability. And this is actually also a test for independence. But if we have that the probability of B given A does not equal the probability of B, then we know that they are dependent and that in some way the probability, so A happening, changes the probability of B happening. Um, so B happening on its own is different to if A has happened. And we have that situation. So if I go back to our introduction here, we could actually work out this probability in this situation. So just as a test, we can say that the probability of B happening given A happens. Well, if A has happened, A has actually happened, then we are inside this circle if A has happened. So we know that that has happened. I'm going to come back to more Venn diagram situations later. So we know that A has happened. But out of those times, B happens there. So I can see that of the 10 times that A happens, that's the 10 in all of A, twice B happens. So we can see that the probability of B given A is equal to 2 out of 10. And you note that in this case, this does actually equal the probability of B because that equaled 20 out of 100 there. So they're the same. Now, if I was to work out instead the probability of A given C, well, just quickly, I'm going to say that is 5 out of 25. 5 out of 25, it's these 5 out of the 25 of C. And that's not going to equal the same as the probability of A, because that's 1 in 10. 5 out of 25, not the same as 1 in 10. Anyway, we'll come back to that kind of idea later. So let's have a look at a situation on a table. So 
On the right hand side, um, I've got a two way table. This is called a two way table, some notation that you need to have. And I have got chemistry or not. I've got a class of students, 20 students in total in my class. So you can see that here. And I have got eight students that do chemistry. That's here. 12 students don't do chemistry. That's here. I've got seven students that do physics and I've got 13 students that don't do physics. And then the individual ones are in the table. So, for example, three students do physics and chemistry. That's here. Four students don't do chemistry, but do do physics. That's here, etc., etc. So let's work out the probability of studying chemistry. So I'm going to use this notation. The probability that they study chemistry is 8 out of 20. So it is these 8 out of these 20. So we have 8 out of 20. The probability that they study chemistry, given that they study physics. Probability that they study chemistry, given that they study physics. Now, crucially, we are now only talking about these seven students because we are they must study physics. We're given that they study physics. And now we are interested in that they study chemistry out of the people who study physics. So that is I'm gonna get rid of that. These three people. So the probability that they study chemistry, given that they study physics, is equal to three out of seven. It's these three out of these seven. OK, and finally, the probability that they don't study chemistry, that they don't study chemistry, given, and I'm going to use yellow in a more consistent way, given that they don't study physics. So the students that don't study physics is these 13. And the probability that they don't study chemistry is these eight. So this would be the probability that they don't study chemistry, given that they don't study physics. And we can see that that is eight out of 13. OK, so that's a two way table example. Now let's have a look at a sample space diagram. So I have rolled two dice here. Here's dice one and dice two. And I've added up all the results. Find the probability that the total was seven given that the dice one rolled an even number. That the total was seven given that dice one rolled an even number. So to do this, I'm going to highlight all the times when dice one rolled an even number. So that's these totals, because it is two dice one when it rolled four. That's these totals. And these ones. So now the total was seven, given that it rolled a dozen. The total seven is here, here, and here. So probability of total seven, given that dice one was even. So, how many times was dice 1 even? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 6 times 3, 18. And we had a total of 7 3 times. So, 3 out of 18. Okay, let's try the next question. Given that one dice rolled three, find the probability that the total was prime. 
So one dice rolled three. Now it, it could be either of the dice now. So I'm going to highlight all the times when one dice rolled uh, three. Now I've flicked it round. The given that comes first in the sentence. So I'm going to do the given that threes. So here are all the times when dice one rolled three. Here are all the times when dice two rolled three. And now I want to highlight the times that the total was prime. So we've got fives and seven. So overall, I can see that the probability that total was prime, given that one dice roll three, is equal to four out of six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, being careful not to double count this time. So the number of times rolled three was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Four out of eleven. Okay, this leads me to suggest some questions for you to try. So this is just two-way tables and sample space diagrams. I recommend you try these questions from Year 2 Applied. That's in the Year 2 Applied textbook, which you can get on ActiveLearn. Okay, and that's all for now.